105 awards, 100 and, well, over 197 nominations. But I did, but I can say that VGA made, that was, that was the last two years, right, for the artists of the decade. Right. That reminded me how long I've been doing this. You know, for myself, I bet, I, I'm just working, right? I had, I've been nominated for the artists of the decade. I'm like, it's been 10 wow. years in the spotlight. Exactly. Right? And I was with people that I thought was also, um, I think I had Samini in there, a few artists. Samini has been working hard. Actually, I met Samini once at a friend's house, but I saw okay. in the years ago. Okay. Okay. So taking that, I think that, that meant a lot, because um, especially being an MC, it's hard to keep it for even two years, you know, so to keep that mantle for 10 years, I just looked back that night and went like, okay, I, I think I need to pat myself on the back. That of I've course. Done, I've done extremely well. So I would say Artist of the Decade, that was that was a great one for me. Yeah. Beautiful. And you know what? It's like, uh, it's like anything else, you know? Very inspirational story. I mean, that was part of one of the reasons or one of the things that exerted influence on me to wanted to have this conversation with you because I wanted people to see the journey because sometimes, you know, you know, you see the music videos and, you know, you hear the songs in the club and, and so on and so forth. Mm. And I want people to really understand the journey and to understand, like, how you excel from, you know, a, a, almost an impossible position yeah. to be able to become, like, an international superstar. So what was, like, the drive and, and the motivation for you? That, that, that's the part that, you know, I want you to share, the drive and the... Um, I think as a person, I hate to lose. That is one. So I know myself that I'm not going to settle for or give up and go like, this is too hard. I would like to stop. I know myself that I'm the type of person that I hate defeat and I would like to prove a point and make sure that I win. And whatever I say, I make sure that I make it happen. That is one. And um, also the fact that actually people genuinely care, you know, so if you're doing anything you don't have consumers customers or people that care about it sometimes you can be inspired because you look at the the reaction when you do stuff so um just speaks for itself you see how many people are on board right now that should tell you that people actually care so yeah actually uh, it was, it yeah it was, makes it makes you want to do more so for for the 10 years i was just literally having fun making sure i keep my mind right don't um allow people or things or words or what people feel get into what I see because I see a bigger picture and until I get there which I don't I don't know if I'm going to ever get there because every stage feels like there's more that you could do so yeah basically just people that care and also me not the type of person that gives up easily so these two but I always give it up to Sacknation you know yeah. they keep me on my toes they make me feel like we care we deserve an album we want your tracks we want you to rap can you give us a freestyle Sacknation we love your hairstyle we love what you're wearing anything from Sacknation keeps me wanting shout to out to Sacknation Sacknation yeah so I think they keep me going and um, yeah thanks thanks to God for creating me as a person who, who doesn't like to give up naturally so that also plays part see it's that you know shared determination that's yes. what makes it happen you know what I'm saying so, and, and actually you know, so here's the other discovery that I made which was really interesting and a lot of people would know this but you're some you, you're a, a motivational speaker because I actually found out back in 2016 you visited Harvard Business School yeah. and actually gave a speech yeah which was very incredible how, how was that how was that experience um I think People take you for how you present yourself. Um, I don't intentionally present myself in the same way. I think just me being Michael, I won't even say Sakure, me just being Michael attracts certain type of people because my presentation probably in the eyes of the people to see somebody that they can look up to, somebody uh, they could learn from, somebody that can inspire them. So I don't necessarily try to inspire or try to motivate, but apparently I come across that way. So I had a mail from the students in, in Harvard that they wanted me to come and share my story because people are, uh, people really want to know, as you just asked, how you were able to do this for a very long time yeah. and especially having no backing behind you and still being able to sell through this very difficult industry. So they wanted to know, you yeah. know, what's in the mind of Sarko, they what's in the mind of Michael, how are you able to do this for a long time? And um, I was honored when I got the mail and yeah, we flew out there sat down with them. I think the videos are on YouTube. No, that was, that was really awesome, actually. I was, I was thinking, hey, you know, kids, you know, watch this, you know, like an inspirational talk. And it was actually about the art of the hustle. Yeah. That's what I love about the topic, you know, like, and, you know, can you give us a little 
breakdown by the art of the Yeah, so I think that was um it was it was the art of the side hustle. So the side hustle. You're, yeah, so you're, you're hustling, which whatever that you're doing, that you need something to back it up. You need stuff on the side, so you have side hustle. So just in case your main hustle doesn't go according to how you want it to go, you still have something to rely on. So I was just telling them about, especially for me, um, the other stuff that I don't put out as Sakode as Michael that I'm into, mm-hmm. just in case. As much as I love music, uh, and I believe in music. I actually hate when people meet you and you go like I'm a musician. They ask you, and what? I'm like, no, that's a full hustle actually. Mm-hmm. But it, it doesn't hurt for you to have different streams of income. Right. So that's what I I went there to have a conversation mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So the other thing, um, and hey, if you in the audience, you know, uh, just to reset the room, you know. Welcome to the Peter Parker Show, and I'm your host, Peter Parker Jr. And up on stage with me are other two moderators, Sub Blue, an artist, and also my homegirl, Mary Spiel. Hey, what up, Mary? How you doing? What up, Sub Blue? You guys still here? Thanks for sticking around. Um, you know, I know we had like a little technical earlier, but, you know, I hope you guys stick it with us. We ain't got no problem working out, you know, Clubhouse, man. I do this all the time. But hey, so we welcoming, you know, Sarko there to Clubhouse for the first time. So give him a big, you know, Clubhouse welcome. If you like what we're doing, follow the Greenhouse at the top. Uh, that's the Peter Parker Show. And also you make sure you follow all the moderators right up here on stage because they're making things happen. So back to the conversation. Um... I know, oh, one last thing I should mention is, uh, I know we have some people who've raised their hands, so we're going to bring you up on stage and you're going to have an opportunity to uh, ask a question. If you want to tweet about this, use the hashtag, the Peter Parker Show, hashtag Sarkodi, okay? Um, so, Big Sar, um, yeah. one thing that I've been dying to ask you, that was like um, the motivation behind the Adonai song, because obviously...